Hello, everyone. Welcome to another episode of Dateable, a show all about modern dating where we dig, dig, dig into the whys of people's behavior and why they say the shit that they do, even if it's good shit. It's always shit, no matter what, right? <laughs> there can be good shit. There can be good shit. shit. Shit is just like a new term for stuff, stuff, convos, yes, vibes, words. you know. All that, all that stuff, word vomit that comes out of your mouth. Yeah, all encompassing. <laughs> yeah. Say shit. But yeah, we had some a really great couple last episodes, really showcasing our hosts that we have in our sounding board group that lead the podcast discussion groups and the weekly happy hours. And now we've kind of announced that we're we've upgraded them to also be moderators in the public love in the time of Corona group. So it's really nice hearing all their stories and just getting to know them at like an even deeper level. And what I really loved about these interviews is that we learned about their plan post COVID. Mm hmm. What are they planning to do with their love lives post-COVID? What did they learn during COVID that they're taking into this new reality? And it just reminds me of this transitional time that we're in right now. Julie and I both have had ha our second shots. Mm -hmm. So we're, I guess, at this point, fully vaccinated. And I feel like I have new superpowers in some ways. <laughs> because So last night, I didn't tell you this, Julie, I was out... Uh, my boyfriend and I were out in, in Culver City. This is where we live now. And uh, ran into someone that I had seen in over 10 years. Someone I knew in New York. Oh, wow. We were standing in line together. He had his mask on. And I was like, maybe that's him. So this is what happened. We were both in line together. I was pulling up his Facebook as he's DMing me on Instagram. Oh, my God. Because I just want to confirm where he was. And he DM'd me and said, are you in line with me right now? <laughs> so we were like, what the fuck? Like, wh what world? And so the, our first conversation was, are you vaccinated? Are you good? We established that. And then he and his wife asked us to join them for dinner. Oh. So it was like, oh, my gosh. First time meeting up with basically new people in mm -hmm. over a year. It was so weird. It was like so crazy to sit down with people who weren't in my quarantine pod yeah i mean the energy is definitely shifting for sure and i think a lot of people like i've definitely heard of people like really going on a lot more dates too recently because mm -hmm. i think there is you know it's this feeling of more security with it all and yeah like there's it definitely feels like we're moving forward so hopefully i, I keep hating to say it because even like with our dating post pandemic i'm like i almost feel like we're like jinxing it a little and i don't want to like say it because we're not out of the woods completely but there's definitely been a shift i mean now like you basically don't even need to wear a mask like that's the latest which is kind of interesting i wasn't really expecting that i thought I we'd know. be wearing masks for a lot longer but let people start kissing again, bring the PDA back. <laughs> yeah, I mean, if they were like STDs are all cured and you're all vaccinated from STDs, I don't know if I could stop wearing condoms. <laughs> like, like, I don't, I don't you know. know I, just, I, mean? I think, I mean, there's all this like stuff, you know, I love to like browse TikTok in my free time, but like all this stuff about like hot girl summer. Have you seen all these like memes? No. That's basically like people going buck wild this summer because they've been like cooped up for a year. Like, it's going to be crazy. It's going to be interesting to see how people react. I do feel like a new person, though, after being vaccinated. And I think we should, you and I should both talk about our second shot experiences because it seems to vary so much and everyone's very curious. So if you haven't had your second shot, I'll tell you my experience. I have Moderna. Uh, I got it at 3 p.m. And that night I felt fine. Wasn't, didn't feel much of a side effect. And I woke up the next day with a massive headache. Mm. Like my head was about to explode. I was really crabby in a terrible mood. I wish I had just taken the day off, but mm. I planned meetings back to back to back and I was not myself. I really felt close to death. I was like, this wow. is, I hate life. <laughs> I didn't night, realize you had it that bad. Yeah, because I told you, I was like, I have a headache, Yeah, I, which I guess relatively to other people's symptoms that I've heard, it's not that bad. But to me, a headache is just debilitating. To mm. me, I can't think straight. Mm. I can't, I, I just can't be my normal self. And that night I took a really strong edible. 
a really strong edible. It knocked me out. And the next day I woke up like a brand new person. Wow. I felt so happy. I drank some coffee and I just felt like I could take on the day. So I do feel like I have transformed into a new person. Well, I loved when you were like, I'm just going to drink a lot of water. And I'm like, I don't know if that's going to really prevent if you're going to get it But or I not. don't know if you felt this way, Julie. I was no. so thirsty all day, so extremely thirsty and just hungry. I couldn't stop drinking or eating. Mm. I honestly, I had very little effects at all. I had Pfizer and I didn't have many effects from it. I had like a small headache, but it wasn't like bad. Like sometimes mm -hmm. I'll just get headaches from looking at the computer. It was no worse than that. Yeah, I think relatively we both yeah. netted out pretty well. I know people who've been in bed for four days and wow. can't get out of bed and who feel like, who truly feel like shit. So just so you know, be prepared with Tylenol or a painkiller after you get your shot. It does help. And if you do edibles, I highly recommend them. Just basically anything that just knocks you out so you don't have to feel the pain. I was like, I feel like that's not on CDC guidance at all. So like, <laughs> like, I think they're purposely like, don't drink, don't have like any, like, you know, anything that's going into your body in some sort of way that's going to mess it up. So I guess do that at your own risk. I'm not, not a, a doctor. I'm not only CDC speaking from experience. If I didn't have edibles, I would take a NyQuil. But basically, or just get punched in the face. Like, just <laughs> knock me out. <laughs> Put me out of my misery so I can wake up the next morning feeling brand new and fresh right. again. Well, speaking of being punched in the face, we have <laughs> <What>? quite... <laughs> what? What kind of transition is that? I'm nervous. Okay, speaking of like being violent... That's so much worse than it really is. I was just going to say we have quite the episode in store this week with love bombing, but I feel like I built that up way too much. That You're like, what the... happened to you this week? That was quite the transition. Speaking of getting punched in the face. Liter what? Figuratively, not literally for love bombing. Yeah, please do explain. I don't know. I just think like, okay, well, I am, I am super excited to do this topic. Actually, we have Dr. Diane, who we've been following for quite some time on mm -hmm. Instagram and de sliding into each other's DMs quite a bit. Flirting and all the time. <laughs> but I feel like this topic of love bombing, I'm so glad we're doing it because I've heard so many people use this in the last year that this person's love bombing me. And I feel like I've even been guilty of thinking that too. And I, I like that we actually like set it straight of like, what it really is and what is the difference of you know someone getting ahead of their feelings versus like actually like manipulative love bombing so i think it's a really good way to differentiate that i think we actually even got like a few questions in the facebook group like a, mm -hmm. about like you know like things are moving really fast they're doing well but like should I be scared of love bombing? So I think this will be really good for a lot of people. But the reason I think of like, I don't know, I just getting think punched like, in the face. You're like, please. I have that girlfriend. I have that. <laughs> I don't know. I think of like, you know, like some dating, like it's not an actual getting punched in the face, but like, you know, like when you think of certain dating behavior that you're just like, what is the association with that? Like, I think of love bombing is probably one of the worst because it's like someone is like controlling and manipulating you, like mm -hmm. true, actual love bombing. And I feel like it kind of is this like punch in the face feeling of like, I feel dumb because I fell for it type of mm. thing. That's kind of like what went through my mind. Yeah, I mean, love bombing is tricky. We talked about it on this episode because you feel good, but then at the same time, you're like, should I feel good about right. this? And there's a thin line between love bombing and someone who genu genuinely cares about you and wants to do nice mm -hmm. things for you. So this is why it's such an, a great episode because we make those differences very clear so you right. can recognize the signs and the symptoms if you are getting punch in the face or just a nice stroke in the face yeah. <laughs> you don't Speaking know what it of is positive love you know how on a it was a couple episodes ago we talked about how you got the um card oh from my the red waiter card, yes. 
the red card. So sh- one of our members, Shelby, she was saying that she actually does this. She goes around and leaves people like these mm-hmm. nice cards to brighten their day. And I feel like hers isn't even in like a hitting on you way. Cause no. She it has a significant other. Like it, it, I think even before she had the significant other, it was never like that way. So maybe that who knows what that guy's intentions was with you. But anyways, I'm, I'm putting this up on YouTube for everyone to see. So is cute. She sent, she basically was like, who wants a card? And she was like DMing and she's like, would you want one? I'm like, yeah, absolutely. This is so sweet. So she sent this card has a nice rainbow on it to bring some sunshine Which, to your day. Okay. Hold on. It's handmade, right? No, the card. Is, oh, <laughs> the card is from Papyrus. Oh, okay. <laughs> The, Damn! How I'm much about time she uh, yeah. <laughs> I'm about to reveal the handmade part is okay. on the inside. Ah, so hello, okay. beautiful. Hello, beautiful. I'll read it so everyone can see. You always so like cute. try to read it through YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> Anyone on YouTube sees like you like in the screen? Trying yeah, to, like, I just look like your grandma read. at the yeah. grocery store. <laughs> Are these oranges or apples? <laughs> So, okay, so Shelby's card. Hello, beautiful. Dating is an act of vulnerability and exposing your flaws, strengths, wants, and desires to a stranger. Dating with kindness is a wonderful way to let another soul know that their heart is in good hands during your time together and that there is still acceptance, generosity, and love in the world. Live in kindness. Be kind and stay dateable. My goodness. (laughs) I got it today and I'm like, this is the most amazing thing. It also came in like this beautiful envelope and I'm like, I actually kind of like forgot the association that she sent it, like was sending this. Yeah. So I'm like, what am I getting in the mail that I How opened it? So much joy. Lovely and profound. It really was. And personalized. Shelby, yep. I'm waiting for mine. And she used dateable colors too. She asked me what my favorite colors were. And I was like, purple and teal. And then I'm like, oh, wait, those are dateable <laughs> colors. As they should be. They are deeply ingrained in <laughs> they you. Are. Now. I had a hard time. It's funny. We had a conversation. This is this is a tangent, but it's all related. We had a conversation with Louise the other day, and she's like like at what point should you know someone's favorite color i I won't give away the details but she's like i've been seeing someone i don't know i'm freaking out i don't even know his favorite color we're like what and then when shelby asked me about my card she's like what's your favorite color i didn't even know i'm like i didn't know mine either i know like which i think i like just subconsciously said purple and teal because it's something i see a lot like, it's I'm like, so I don't funny. really know what my favorite color is. I know. So funny. So what are funny. those deep heat rooted ones? But I am happy to report back, though. Speaking mm. of Louise, I'm happy to report back. I actually did my date that mm-hmm. I talked about, the mood rise. It kind of worked out perfectly because I talked about this. What do we do? We did the intro on Saturday. Mm-hmm. And then I realized that, you know, there was actually a super mood. So I decided to get on my activity. But yeah, I mean, I've definitely, I've been seeing someone new, which has been really great. He's pretty private. So I'm not going to go into too much details, but it's just, it's, he has been wonderful. So I'll leave it at that. But you got to give us the behind the scenes of how you got to the moonrise. Oh, so there was a bit of a hype. <laughs> Louise, that you did not know about. Louise failed to mention this in the activity. This is the problem when you take advice from friends of like things you should do and you don't do your own research. <laughs> Sometimes things get left out. Apparently there is an easy, like it was in this park, Corona Heights, and there's like an easy steps up. That's like very easy to navigate. I mean, it was still actually, I shouldn't say it was super easy to navigate. It was still pretty freaking high up. Like this was actually a super cool park. Like it, you could see like the whole view of San Francisco from there. It wasn't even a park. It was like rocks and stuff. Like oh. it was not what I was expecting in the slightest. Like I was expecting like grass. Like it was not it. And anyways, um, first world problems. <laughs> I, was I know. Expecting grass. I there was rocks. But we were walking up, and it was quite the hike. Like quite the hike up, and. I was like, I don't think I'm going to be able to do this like in the evening when it's like pitch black. So we did the stairs down, but the problem was it did not go to where we were parked at all. So it was quite, um, uh, got a so little you got lost. lost. Got a little lost. So it was an adventure. It was an adventure. The whole thing was an adventure. It was, you know, it was super nice, but 
definitely an adventure. Were you dressed for it? Yes. Okay, that's good. I wasn't, like, not dressed for it. But I wasn't expecting, like, a hike in this. Like, it was a little bit of a surprise. Maybe the... that was Louise's plan all along. It's not so much about getting to the top to see the moon rise. It's, like, really how you get there and get back down. <laughs> the ultimate test. Yep. Exactly. Well, that sounds like fun. That's a good. I try to. I I went to see the moonrise too outside oh, yeah? of my parents' door. <laughs> I just opened the door. I was like, "Oh, hey, look, we're in the suburbs, and you can see the moon really well. That's great." And then a little different the vibe, door. but <laughs> it was a it was a romantic, yes, with my parents. <laughs> but I was inspired by that too. I thought that was like perfect timing, mm-hmm. and it is just like romantic to stare at the moon. Something it we totally don't do was. All the time. I, you know what I loved about this? It was a date I would never think to do before mm-hmm. this. So I think that's like what, I mean, that's what Dateable does. It opens your mind to new ideas. And like for anyone that's, you know, hasn't heard that last episode where we mentioned this, I think it was actually just the episode one ago, right? I got like on this quick. Yeah, yeah you it was did. like, like someone in the group was like, this sounds like a cool idea. And I'm like, I actually did it. Like You were so inspired. It was fast. It was. Um but we had an event, part of the sounding board, to go through, like, really, like, interesting date ideas with our past guest, Jeff Harry. And honestly, I love it because, like, I definitely am someone that's maybe more guilty to, like, basic ideas. And I, I thought this was really interesting and different. You know, something else I thought about would, would be a great <laughs> kind of fun date idea that we don't discuss often are, like, double dates. Double yeah. dates with your friends are so much fun. Uh, my my partner and I are going on a double date tonight with two friends, and then we have no plan other than just dinner, and then just let's just see what happens. And yeah. that could be, when you have more people involved, it could be totally. even more fun. Okay, so quick, let's just do a really quick run through of announcements, and then we'll have a quick message from our partner. But just high level announcements, you know, like we've been keep saying this, but definitely check out Love at the Time of Corona. One day we're going to have to change the name. For now, we'll keep it going. Um, And then, you know, the sounding board is where it's at. Like, Get to know our hosts that you got to know through the episode even better. There was this great happy hour on Thursday. We do them every Thursday. There's podcast discussion groups every Sunday. The one for love bombing is going to be super juicy. So definitely want to get in on that. And I mean, we had a great one last night. There was Janice, Shieldy, and Hisela were the hosts. So we kind of alternate our hosts up and people were saying like new people that joined, how fun it was and how great it was to like, you know, just shoot the shit and talk about dating and relationships and just life with new people. I think at the end of the day, it's all about forming connections. And we've said this a zillion times, but like, it's not all it's not always a romantic connection. It's just human connection overall. 